Well, we're talking about oppression. Let's talk about the condition of women. You mentioned it earlier, but there's some pretty chilling videotape on the website of your organization. I'm going to play a clip from a, a young woman, uh, a 12-year-old girl, uh, who tells her story a little bit in this bit of video. Take a look. How common is this kind of incident? It's very common, but unfortunately, uh, a very rare cases comes to the media. Even we cannot, we don't have access so much because you know that rape and forced marriages are very sensitive issues in the society of Afghanistan, which usually people do not want to be, talk about it. But we try to, you know, go to them and convince them that you have to talk, you have to show to the world that you are not liberated and you are. Uh, facing such problems. So, so it's very, very common. Hundreds, thousands of cases happen. So the challenge that it seems like advocates and, and supporters of equality and self-determination are facing is that when we show video like this, there are, will be people who say, well, that's the problem. That's why we have to have U.S. forces there, because look how backward those people are. You say that's not the answer, that there are other ways to bring about mm -hmm. equality in Afghanistan. And just to represent, you know, the American, some of the American voices out there, I'm imagining they're saying, well, if you could have done it, wouldn't you have done it by now? These videos that you're showing um, of, of the rape, you know, in the um, domestic violence against women and fundamentalist violence against women is under the domination of United States. It's a time that thousands of troops are present. It's a time that more than 40 foreign country is inside the country. So it's not the time that Americans are out. It's when Amer we are under the control of Americans. These things are happening daily. So I mean, what's uh, this is the proof that America cannot do anything. The only solution, as Rawa was always saying, that domestic violence is also depending on political situation. It's very much, you know, depends and relates to that, have roots on politics of Afghanistan. So as long as we don't have a democratic government who care for the uh, uh, for the women's rights, uh, how we can expect women's rights and the respect for, you know, and liberation of women. Uh, we have today, uh, you know, these domestic violence because there is uh, no law, because of unlawlessness, uh, because of uh, the corrupt judiciary that we have, the misogynist judiciary that we have, because of the involvement of police and all authorities. Even Karzai is pardoning every day the criminals and rapists and giving them protection. This happens because we don't have a, dem a real democratic government. And so as long as we don't have that, we cannot uh, m m you know, expect positive change in the women's situation. So should the U.S. just leave? Because there are plenty of people here who also say, enough, let's just get out of there. Exactly. We are in favor of withdrawal of the U.S. troops because we think they are failed. If they really, you know, want to help the people of Afghanistan, if they are really honest in this claim, they have other alternatives. The first thing, as Rawa always emphasized, is that uh, uh, this armament of the private armies of fundamentalists, first of all, they have gun. So that's why democratic organizations, democratic forces cannot raise up because uh, uh, they are under the threats of fundamentalists. Uh, that's why, uh, you know, we have a fake... Get, how do they get guns? Because they had the support of foreign countries with them. Uh, they, they supported it with millions of dollars and with guns and with Kalashnikovs. And uh, uh, as long as they ha have Kalashnikov in their hands, we will not have a fair and free election. You, you know about the very you know, funny joke of election in Afghanistan. And uh, also we, we, we cannot talk about women's rights and these things. So what can we do? How can civil society here help civil society there? I think that uh, the first thing that why we are here, and this is the call of Rawa and other democratic movements in Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan for American people, for American democratic you know, movements here to raise up, to pressurize your governments, to talk about the realities, the real image of, of the country and um, to, to force your government to stop supporting these criminals. 
I mean, we are really tired of this war, and we want the United States uh, people to uh, get uh, uh, united with our people to force the government, to force the international community to change this wrong policy, which has continued for more than 30 years. One of the other options for U.S. Uh, uh, commanders in the field in Afghanistan these days is to use um, pilotless drones, these f vehicles that can send missiles without any pilots involved. Uh, what's the impact of those missions, of those bombing attacks? I mean, you can see the impact of that is that uh, Americans are sitting in United States just by one, you know, remote control. They are killing our civilians. They are killing children. They are killing thousands of women and innocent people in the villages. Every night we hear the bombings of America, and our people ha do not know their. I mean, what's their sin? They are innocent. They did nothing. Instead of killing the leaders of um, uh, the terrorists who are sitting in the parliaments, the leader of uh, the very famous leader of Taliban, it's a quite big shame, I think. The leader of the Taliban is allowed to candidate himself for the presidential election. But our innocent people are being killed in the name of so called war on terror. Mm. If you had one 15 seconds to give a message to Barack Obama, what would it be? I just say that please stop this wrong, fake policy in Afghanistan. Please do not deceive your people. Please do not deceive our people. And just, uh, if you cannot help us, leave us. But if you want to help us, the first help is that take all these fundamentalist viruses that United States government created for Afghanistan. Thank you so much, Zoya. Zoya, it's a pseudonym. Her face is still having to be obscured because her security can still not be guaranteed after eight years. Thanks so much for being with us, Zoya. We'll go out with this clip.